add value to your business or do you want to just be this administrative person? And often if you look at your talent team and the caliber of talent in your company, they correlate. You could hire the best person for the job if they were in your candidate pool. All these individual employees, one by one by one, together, their voices all come together to articulate the culture of the company. Yeah, everybody wants a silver bullet. And the, that's the sad truth is there's not one silver bullet, there's a lot of bullets. And you gotta shoot them all. Mike, good morning, how's it going? Uh, good morning, it's actually good afternoon already. Oh God. On day three at HR Tech. I guess it depends when day our listeners decide to listen to That's the podcast. True. That's true. Maybe I should just say good time of day that you happen to be in. That's the beauty of time-shifted podcasts on demand. <laughs> exactly. Asynchronous. Uh, well, Mike, you know, in general, we have practitioners, thought leaders, vendors, economists, and plenty more join us here at Hiring on All Cylinders. Uh, but I have to say that one of my favorite types of guests that we have join us would be authors. Uh, and lucky enough for this episode, we actually have one in our presence. Author at Fistful of Talent, president of HRU Technical Resources, uh, is our next guest, an HR pro who knows a thing or two about recruiting and selection, uh, as well as who has the best scoop at HR Tech every year. And a certifiable HR celebrity. Uh, he's got yeah. a you know, larger-than-life <laughs> billboard down the convention hall here. Uh, you know, we're going to go get a selfie in front of that after this podcast. Exactly. Well, uh, Tim Sackett, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So as I kind of alluded to, uh, you do a whole bunch in the HR talent space, uh, including speaking at HR Tech. So yeah. you spoke earlier today. Can you give us a little bit or earlier this week? No, yeah, earlier today. Earlier yeah. today, okay. And what exactly did you talk about? Can you share some of that with our listeners? Yeah, we do it real life recruitment marketing. Um, I did it with my friend Shonda Zillick, who used to be the employment branding leader at GE, mm -hmm. so big job. Yep. And now she does the same job for Qualtrics, which is still another big job. But she's a, she's a Michigan person. I'm a Michigan person, so we met about five years ago at a recruitment marketing conference and then we just think the same way and so for Double me Wolverine. like when we yeah <laughs> I'm at a Wolverine I'm a Sparty but like so ah, we, okay. we sorry, always do the sorry, go blue football, go green <laughs> nice <laughs> but um it's such a it's one of those things I love about talent acquisition is that recruitment marketing space that I think so so many of us just struggle with and if we were really good at it if we were actually marketers at heart most of our job most of our filling the positions and jobs would be so much easier Mm -hmm. um, we tend to still about 90% of organizations are posting and praying, right? Post yep. a job, pray somebody applies instead of really going after. And so it was, so it's really about that. It's really about, I mean, for us, it was about how do we give real information to organizations that don't have unlimited budgets? Mm -hmm. So this isn't an Amazon or a GE or a Google or something like right. that, that you have a million dollars to spend on recruitment marketing. This is, you know, Mary in Dubuque, Iowa, that yeah. is like, please help me do anything. Like, how can I start this? You yeah. Know? What are you seeing working in uh, employ employment marketing? Well, I mean, obviously the CRM automation and some of that. I mean, the, uh -huh. you have money for the tech, like all of that stuff is great. Yep. What we were talking about was you can do a lot of this stuff without the tech to start. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like employing brand ambassador programs where you literally are using and leveraging your employees and their networks to go out and just share the message, not share jobs, right? Yeah. Share what it's like to work for you. Be authentic. Like when we talk about Gen Z and millennials that, that make up literally 70% of the workforce now, they're, they're looking for that authentic kind of messaging. They don't, mm -hmm. they're not looking for this glitzy, overproduced, million dollar yeah. commercials. Like I, I love, like when GE came out with um, the Owen commercials, those mm -hmm. were brilliant. They're yeah. funny. They spent millions of dollars doing that. Not, but nobody else can really do that, right? You have to have a giant brand, giant budget. But I mean, you know, now we have technology where I can literally get my iPhone in my face and say, oh my gosh, this is what I love about my job. And bam, it's on Instagram stories or it's on wherever in like a matter of minutes. And so how do we leverage our employees that love working for us and sharing their stories to me is like one of the easiest things to do. Yeah. We did a really interesting project actually at Intello where um, we had our engineers build our own employer branding site, yeah, and they just loved it. They yeah. had a blast. They really it was really creative. It was really personal. Put Easter eggs throughout Put it. Put Easter eggs <laughs> throughout. Engineers. So, yeah. uh, 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 what is the T that appears? Uh, oh, boba tea. Boba tea appears <laughs> if you click over a certain area, and it really is very authentic. And I think yeah. for the kind of recruit recruiting that we do, it really speaks to our potential candidates and gives them a feel feel for what the culture of the company is like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, no, and go ahead. All right, so I was actually going to jump on that and say it's kind of funny you were talking about you have to be authentic when you're sharing this. And for the longest time, I think people thought social media, just the use of it, was employment marketing, recruiting marketing. And it's like, no, 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 you can't just from you know your ATS click post job and your entire Twitter feed is just 
hey, we're hiring, hey, we're hiring, hey, we're hiring, which is like what many people still do. And yet it's, if you're so authentic, all of a sudden you can create that marketing engine that just drives itself. Yeah, we talked about this. I mean, Shonda would say a, a, a true recruitment marketing program never shares jobs. They're only sharing like content of your company, what it's like to work at your company. Yep. They'll find the job, right? They'll go search if they really want to come work for you. I kind of go, well, realistically, eventually somebody is going to ask like, what the heck is going on and why aren't we sharing our jobs? So I always said like a five to one ratio. If you share five pieces of great job related content to one job, <laughs> and actually with job description, that's probably a good like cycle, you know, and, and then people will well, listen. Yeah. Like if your employee brand ambassadors are sharing great content, here's a video and here's this thing we did and here's this great program. And um, Friday we had this great cookout, whatever. And all of a sudden, okay, by the way, we have this cool job that just came open. People are going to listen to that. Mm. They'll actually pay attention. If it's job, 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 it just becomes noise and they don't even, they stop paying attention. Start deleting it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. One of the subjects uh, that has come around, at least uh, at this table, this conference, is kind of this concept of what has made the leap from buzzword to best practice. And would love to kind of get your thought on what you've seen at this conference that you might think have, has made that leap. Wow, I don't know if it really has. Um, I actually had breakfast with some folks today and they wanted to, they were surprised by all the AI stuff. And again, big buzzword, right? And their impression was, oh, that's made the leap. And I'm like, not in real life. Right. <laughs> like I spoke at Nebraska Sherm last week and I had a breakout of like 150 TA people that are in the weeds doing it. They had no idea that, th that you can actually automate a lot of the recruiting process mm -hmm. using chatbots, using some of the AI automation. Like there's, they had no, no concept of that. And so I'm like, here, I mean, we're the one percenters in terms of HR tech. Like, we all love it. We're all geeked out about it. That's why we're here at this conference. And so we tend to think the buzzwords have already jumped the shark. The reality is, is the actual end user, the buyer, the people in the weeds filling the jobs, it, they don't even know yet. Hmm. They haven't heard it yet. We're yeah. just, a, we're, it's, a, it's a laggard, unsophisticated buyer. When I say unsophisticated, that doesn't mean that they're dumb and they don't care that they're not right. good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It means they don't pay attention to it like we do. Te yeah, mm -hmm. technology is not their roundhouse, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, so, it, so, so it's interesting. Like, I, I, gosh, I'm thinking like, what buzzword has finally come full circle? Um, and, and I'm like, gosh, I don't even, maybe CRM and now mm -hmm. yeah. would be one. And people would go, oh, well, that's, you know, we've had that product on the market for 10 years or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I think finally, you know, people understand and like every ATS now tries to say, oh, well, we have CRM built in. It's not, it's kind of CRM for dummies, which yeah, yeah, many of us yeah. need, right? It's just basically blast mass email and stuff like that. But there's no nurturing capabilities and, you know, kind of tracking and stuff that we really want out of a robust CRM. Um, but I think that's finally understood that in most organizations in the Fortune 1000, that you better have some sort yeah. of CRM product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, your, your For Dummies reference reminds me of uh, <laughs> a book that we had yeah. come out here what at HR a, What Tech. a transition. It was exactly our goal, was to demystify yeah. the, you know, the, the hype and uh, decode the buzzwords and just uh, introduce the topic of recruiting automation in a simple, easy to understand, straightforward way for those practitioners who aren't going to be you know, comfortable being the earliest adopters of new technology and just kind of open up and share stories about how their peers are, you know, actually improving their recruiting process by implementing these tools. What I, what I love about that, and like when I wrote my book too, The Talent Fix, you can get it on the Amazons. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> like a little plug yeah, in there. Get just plug jammed in. it right in. Yeah. Um, just like I did. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Although his so, is on Amazon, so I think yeah, it's a little more legit. Different. <laughs> Mine's more of a book let than a book. But no, what I, like I, when I wrote the book, it was about writing for that 90% of that that are still actually trying to figure it out and don't know yeah. because we tend to hang out in these groups of people that, you know, that we're totally into the, you know, we love the tech stuff. And yeah. so for us, it seems easy. But then when you go and talk to the masses, it's like, there's still so many people that don't understand, don't get it. Yeah. And so again, I wrote the book to say, Hey, if I was to come in and help your shop, how would I do that? What would the tech stack look like? What yeah. would, I mean, what were the, what would the team dynamics look like? What were the, what's the metrics? Like we still, I think struggle with all the technology we have. Yep. We don't have agreed upon like 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 recruiting analytics that no. shows if so, like if an individual recruiter over like who how do we know one's successful over another? Yeah, we don't know. Right, can't tell you. Nope. Yeah, it's really reminiscent in some ways. You think back to before products like Salesforce.com in the sales world. It's like some sales reps do well, some don't. It was a giant black box and mystery. You didn't yeah. know 
why some, you know, who, what your sales were going to be or anything. Yeah. Uh, and I think you're seeing some of those same best practices in sales organizations come into talent acquisition teams where it's like, hey, let's, let's have a platform. Let's have a defined process for this. Um, let's have best practices that we share among the team, mm -hmm. what be those email templates or whatever they might be. Um, but let's improve our game together rather than have it be sort of a crapshoot based on, you know, who's the good recruiter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll talk with TA leaders and they'll go, oh, well, Jill's our top recruiter. And I'm like, well, talk to me, you know, and then, oh, what and, does she and, do that? and yeah. Mary's our, our worst recruiter. Yeah. And, oh, Jill's filling, you know, 10 hourly jobs, you know, a, a week. And Mary's trying to find front end developers in, in some <laughs> right. obscure Midwestern <laughs> right. city. And she can't. And, and all of a sudden, so, you know, I'm like, that's your judgment because right. someone fills jobs and someone doesn't. Like there's, again, there's just no funnel activity tracking really to understand really what, is that, what does that look like. Yeah. yeah. And I think it kind of goes like there is both the science aspect and the arts uh, aspect of sales, talent. And for the longest time, I think talent acquisition recruiting has so leaned on the art side of it without realizing that there is data that can be gleaned from these processes, but we just haven't had an effective way of really doing that. Uh, and you have piecemeal, you know, we're piecemeal examples of that, but not quite uh, unified by any means. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, I guess given that, that question, the, the concept of buzzword to best practice, recruiting automation, what's your take? Oh, I, I mean, I love um, a lot of the AI automation. It, it's, we call it AI because we just we, we don't yeah. really call it what it is, which is more of intelligent automation, right? Mm -hmm. It's IA, not AI. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I mean, I think we can sit here as people that are at the, at the technology conference and go, we're probably, I mean, right now, theoretically, I could eliminate a lot of my recruiters on the front side of the funnel mm -hmm. because yeah. I can have automation go out um, obviously, you can use like great sourcing technology, right? To find all these technology, I can use um, AI to actually reach out and screen and actually fit to job. And little by little, and, and it'll go all the way through and setting up the interview. So the first time I'm seeing somebody for real, and the first time they're interacting, interacting with somebody from for real in my company, is when they show up for an interview. Yeah. And a lot of big brands will go, well, I, you know, we we don't really want a computer, and it's not in the natural language processing and all this stuff for a chatbot's not there yet. I'm like. It's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and even, even you know, apart from that more cutting edge technology, if you break it down for people and you say, well, how much time do you spend sourcing? How much time do you spend scheduling candidates? How mm -hmm. much time do you spend screening? You know, we, we did a, a survey and we found that the average recruiter spends 13 hours a week to source for just one role. That's like nearly two days of their week spent yeah. sourcing for just one role. And so if you can take that grunt work off their plate, means they've got more time for the human part of the recruiting process. Yeah, and I, and I do, I love, you know, that I, again, I think AI is gonna get there, it will help us so much. You know, I, I'm in love with the sourcing technology. The one thing that I will hear consistently from teams is, well, great, now I have 650 million profiles. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, and the, and the job just got exponentially bigger, not smaller, yeah. it got harder, unless you have really great matching technology. And also, then you add in the automation of, how do I reach out to those 650 million profiles or whatever that might be and find that 0.01% that actually is interested as a passive candidate in me and now let me as a recruiter really go through and start closing. Yeah. And that becomes, oh my gosh, like when that tipping point happens, like you're going to see the entire just, you know, and that, that will be crazy. You know, it's, I think it's what we're waiting for. Exactly. So. We are in an interesting era in the economy, historically low unemployment, yeah. uh, skills gap for, for, for many of the jobs that are open. Um, how do you see those sort of macroeconomic trends changing the way talent acquisition teams approach their job? You know, I, it, it's, it, has, it doesn't, it does, again, it hasn't changed fast. I think they keep looking at their ATS vendor to give them the answer. And most of the ATS vendors don't have the answer right. mm -hmm. um, because it's technology that's outside of the ATS that has to be bolted on. It's part of that tech stack, right? Yeah. And so if you take a look at the TA tech stack, I think you know the average kind of mid-sized company, we'll see if you say it's like a thousand employees and up, um, they probably have anywhere from 12 to 24 pieces in that TA tech stack. And I think most of them would go, oh, no, I have an ATS, that's all I need. Like, no, right. you need some interview technology, you need some sourcing technology, you need yep. some texting technology for the most part if your ATS doesn't have it. Like, you know, you start adding those in and they have no concept of how to build that. So it's overwhelmed. 
I, but I, I mean, I think we start to see that they start to think more like marketers a little. Right. Maybe they're reaching out to their own marketing department. Maybe they're trying to figure out how do we do this. You know, unfortunately, I think still with the vast majority of SD is just spending more money, spending more money on Indeed, spending more money on LinkedIn, spending yeah. more money on whatever. Doubling down. So yeah. That, on what may not be working for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, in, you know, and in the, in the hard part is, is those vendors, um, while, while they're like helping and they're a big source, they're also not educating them on the future, which is, Google for jobs is changing the world. Right, right. <laughs> and people are like, well, what do you mean? What's that? And we're like going, well, you understand why you're paying more for Indeed, right? It's not because we're in ultra low unemployment. We've been there for 24 months. <laughs> it's right. because Google's not indexing their jobs anymore and they're not getting the traffic. So now you're paying more for the same traffic. Right. And they're just like, wait a minute, I don't understand. And you're just like, yeah, don't pay more for the traffic. Like just figure out how to, how to match your job descriptions and your schema to what the algorithm is in Google and your, your traffic will go up. You well, know. and even if the traffic goes up, I was just talking to a vendor or a uh, co- company the other day who they said, you know, we're paying to promote these jobs, but the applicants that we're getting aren't qualified for the positions we're hiring for. And yeah. so, you know, a lot of TA teams just aren't equipped to shift gears and go from, you know, evaluating inbound active candidates to an outbound mm-hmm. recruiting process of passive candidates. Well, and it's so hard historically to change. Like I know so many companies and we work with like the big three autos. Um, and one of those finally has come to us and said, yeah, if, you, if we don't necessarily need a degree for an engineer anymore. And that was always Whoa. a must have. Yeah. yeah. Like they would hire contractors without it, but then you would never get converted to director or whatever it might be. And they finally, I think, figured out. Now IT has figured this out a little sooner. Sure. But like some of those harder, like, and so we're, we're reducing some of that stuff and saying, wait, does, does a formal university education really make sure that are you better than somebody else? Not well, necessarily. And even some of those mid-skilled roles are becoming roles you need to actively recruit for. You yeah. know, I, I was talking to a company yesterday that they do a lot of hire 12,000 blue collar workers a year. Their hardest to find, one of their hardest to find roles was a diesel mechanic. Oh yeah. And yeah. you know, you yeah. don't think of that as a role, you know, think you post that, you get a plenty of applicants. No, no not no. the case. You no, have to truck go find drivers, those people. Like, truck drivers. Oh my gosh, it's nurse impossible. Nurse practitioners, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of those kind of mid-skill roles that weren't traditionally roles you do active outbound recruiting for that now you have to do active outbound recruiting for, you're not gonna fill your, your open recs. Well, and I think the sad thing is, again, the vendors that many of these companies are engaged with aren't necessarily saying, hey, this is what you should be doing because, again, they're doubling down what's worked. I mean, yeah. it's it's the music industry saying, no, we're gonna keep selling CDs. It's <laughs> like, okay, who still has a CD player? Trust us, the LP's coming back. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 just give it some time. Yeah. Yeah. A-track, this, it's This Apple great. music A-track. thing's not gonna work. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I see that constantly. Um, you know, from from heads of talent that'll say, well, I, you know, they'll come and they'll say, hey, well, we're broken, like we need help, and so I'll say, okay, we'll stop doing this, start doing this, and there's that, oh gosh, that, but that could be, that could, well, I don't know about that, right. like I'm not, I'm, a, I, I'm unsure, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, and so we're just gonna keep doing what we do, and it's like, like, oh, we have this crappy AT, like, so one of the things I hear consistently from practitioners when they come to the HR tech conferences, it's overwhelming. And when you have a buyer who's overwhelmed, yeah. they stop, they don't buy. They lock up. Yeah, they're just like, well, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. I'm like, but you said that was broken. Yeah, but I, but we have no idea what to do here. We don't want to break it worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a big, big part of our philosophy here at Intello. I mean, this why this podcast exists. It's why we do this book and vendor landscape and stuff. Is we feel like educating the market is the most important thing to do in any new market like yeah. this, uh, rather than you know pitch your product. So. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I think mo- there's a few things, right, that I think like talent acquisition shops could do right away, which is one is leverage your own database right now. Like, yeah. it's still the most underutilized tool that we have that we spent all this money building. <laughs> yeah. And you, some, of these, some of these companies have millions of resumes, and all these people came and said, hey, I love you, I want to come work for you. And then we did no interaction with them. You know, maybe they came in the last day before we closed the rec, whatever, right? There's a million reasons why we never interacted. And yet they just sit there. And if we would just turn on some nurturing, we turn on, you know, some rediscovery kinds of technology, yep. you would instantly fill positions that you would, it takes you no more money. Right. You already, <laughs> you already have, have them. Yep. I do. I did a project for a company in Indiana and they came to us and said, we need 15 engineers and RPO project stuff. Right. And so we said, OK, we can come in and do it at like a really reduced rate if you let us in your ATS. And, they, you know, they were like, sure. I'm like, here you go. Here's a username. Right. Go in. It's a SaaS model. Um, we filled 12 of the 15 roles from their own ATS. Wow. 
And, and then the guy was like, oh my gosh, we want to do more work with you. How did you do this? Like, nah, that's the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you heard it here. Uh, yeah. Secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> the secret sauce is you got talent in your ATS that you're not even paying attention to. Right, <laughs> right. That's, that's a classic story. There's so much out there. And it's whether that's internal data that you've accumulated, whether it's just talent pools that you haven't been exposed to, or if it's just realizing, hey, it's not just a single platform you have to reach out to. It's not just a single job board we have to post to. Like, it's about diversifying all of those different touch points and making sure that people are aware and, and communicated to and, and are sold to some extent what this opportunity really could be. Yeah, everybody wants a silver bullet. And the, that's right. the sad truth is there's it's not so one true. silver bullet, there's a lot of bullets. Yeah. And you gotta shoot them all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, okay, so uh, if we take a step back, obviously it can be overwhelming so much at this show. Uh, AI this, you know, all of these different potential future products or trends. Do you have any predictions for where talent is going to be headed down the road? I mean, I think we're, we're, we're quickly running into a landscape where we're going to have an HR tech stack and a TA tech stack. And I think what people want traditionally is they want to have this all, you know, enterprise level bundle, everything in one, right? What we know is if on the HRIS system side, if, if you go and say, oh, I'm going to get a whatever, you know, big enterprise level software that has talent as part of it. That's usually really vanilla. That's not yeah. what their core was. Right. And so all of a sudden you go from, oh, I was using this best of breed ATS to now this big giant, you know, system ATS. And it's almost like they took a three or four or five year step back in time mm. in terms of their ability to recruit. So one of the things I saw at the Pitch Fest, and, and which is a lot of startups, is there's a lot of technology out that's saying, hey, go check, go fix all those best of breeds. Go get an Intello, go get a greenhouse, go get to this, go get to this, go get to this, yep. and we'll make it that umbrella for you. Mm. We'll make it all work together so it's seamless for you like you want. Yeah. So that so they feel like it is. It'll yeah. have the same look and feel. It's basically just an overlay, right? Yeah. But they're doing the integrations and they're doing all that stuff. So that now this head of TA, this head of HR goes, okay, I got it. And I can actually go out and get the best stuff. You That's know, you're not looking at some like literally vanilla washed down version of TA tech. Yeah. You're getting the next greatest thing on the market and being able to plug it in. And, and what I see and probably what you guys see too is the next greatest technology in TA is usually cheap technology because they're just trying to get users. Right, <laughs> yeah. And, and that, you know, we, we go, well, we'll wait for our big giant ATS to have that. Five years on the roadmap, if they ever get it, yeah, like, yeah, come right. on. Like, you know, how do you, like right now in ultra low unemployment, you have to move fast. Yep. And if somebody has something that works, go get it, figure out how to plug it in. Um, I, you know, it's I, that's where I see it going, you mm. know. Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, I think that's just about it. We're running up on time here. Uh, but Tim, thanks so much for joining us. This thanks has been for a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Great discussion. I love talking shop. Uh, where can our audience learn more about you and, and the work that you do? Oh my gosh. Uh, TimSackett.com. I write every day. Um, have been doing it for eight years. So um, if you Google Tim Sackett, you'll get my, me and a lot of links, or you'll get a truck driver chaplain out of Minnesota. I'm not the truck driver chaplain, <laughs> Tim Sackett. Just to clarify. But that would be so cool if I was both, guys. <laughs> That'd be pretty like, yeah. On the weekends, I'm a truck driver chaplain. <laughs> um, so TimSackett.com, and then I'll Obviously, the, the book, The Talent Fix, uh, is on the Amazons there. So I've had a, a just really great feedback. It's real readable. So go get it. Go get it. Terrific. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.